Right, okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to West of Lothing. So, objectives for this evening. I would like to win the rest of these battles, if at all possible, because I assume that's going to serve some sort of purpose, and if I'm lucky it's going to give me some sort of perk that will help me fight off more cows. Second objective, the lockpicking book. Way, way overdue, I know, but necessary it is. So, the book is in a place called Breadwood, and if my memory serves me correctly, I can get directions to Breadwood from the people at the railroad camp. So we'll go to the railroad camp, we'll get directions to Breadwood, we'll find the shop in Breadwood, that will sell us the book, and then we will go back, basically, to do the entire game all over again, in order to use the book to open all sorts of things, right? Okay, now I am thinking that it would be quite boring for you to sit there and watch me try and win all of these games, because they look like they're going to be quite difficult and take a bit of trial and error to figure out the strategy, like how in this one you needed to kill the medic first. So I am going to just go through these a little bit quicker rather than slower, um, and then we will go off to Breadwood and get the thing. And then eventually, once we've got the lockpicking book, I promise we'll go and deal with the House in the Desert people. <laughs> They've been there for about a year, but that's absolutely fine. Anyway, I am going to win some of these battles, or try, and probably fail miserably. Okay, I'm going to kill you straight away. Uh, what does that do? Um, increases the target stats by one turn. Well, I'm certainly not going to do that to the enemy, am I? Um... Yeah, this one actually looks like the easiest. I assume the first, like the earliest battles in the chronology, would be the easiest ones, rather than the most recent ones. But never mind. Um, oh darn it! I can't use that again because I don't have that bloke who's giving me more AP like I did before, and I spent the entire video criticising him and calling him a muppet when in reality he um, he wasn't actually that bad. Again, with the friggin' cow not doing anything. <sighs> Why does this cow have some sort of attrition problem? It's like he, he acts for a few turns and then he just freaking gives up. It is so frustrating if this cow will just do a job. Is it running out of AP or something? Is that the idea? Oh, it will attack whatever is directly in front of them, so it can't attack other characters. Oh. It was literally in the job description and I criticised it for being who it is. Oh well. Never mind. Freaking maniac. Maybe I should use that on him. Because he can't he, he can't bring them back to life. He can only heal wounded people. So that's bad. But now two hits from this bolt will kill him. Oh, but no, then he's going to heal himself, isn't he? Like a pig. No, he's not. Okay, good. He's just doomed himself. Again, it's all about the strategy, which is that thing I don't have. Arr. I'm going to need to hit him four times. He'll, he'll, atta he'll assault the... I don't have anything to attack. Oh! <sighs> there is so much more strategy to this than I ever realised. I am so, so stupid. <laughs> I mean, none of that helps, because there aren't any grunts in either of these battles. There's just, um, there's just a hell of a lot of grenadiers. But never mind, we'll survive this somehow. <laughs> With one hit point remaining. Everybody else died except for me. I only had one hit point remaining. But I survived that. By the time <laughs> So the question is... This... this is different. I 
So that first time when I said here are two battles and they look identical, did I click on the same one twice like some kind of idiots? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So these people will only attack what's in front of them, but they will attack this until it's dead. And then they will attack me. I don't know how much damage they do, but I think they do a decent amount. Because they've got muscle of five. So they are focused on, 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 on melee ink. A demon hunter will attack the enemy with the highest mysticality. Who is that? It's mysticality of one, mysticality of three, mysticality of seven. Okay, so he will attack them first. But I kind of want them because they're going to give me two extra hit points. Per, uh, two extra action points, rather. So I'm going to assault... Got five to start with, that's good. I'm gonna kill him first. Because now they are completely safe, and now every single turn I'm gonna get another two hit points, and I only need three in order to do my. Oh goodness. That's more than I thought. Oh gosh. I thought this tactic was going to work really well, but I don't think it's going to quite manage it, because they're going to do slightly more damage than I can handle. Yep. Oh well. I learned a little something, didn't I? Let's try that again, and this time not suck quite so badly. So I can't kill him first, then. I've got to let him attack them. Give myself another hit point. Action point, even. Heroes now die. I can now shoot him, I need to survive one more turn, so I'll shoot him, so assuming he doesn't kill me in one shot, which he doesn't, I can now smite him again, and he'll be dead. And that is what we call a very, very, very slow success. Ah, getting good was the only way to keep my little brother from lording it over me all the time. I feel that we should give you some sort of prize. I've got some leftover guns from when I was gluing the figurines together. You want those? Plastic guns. A bunch of really small guns. This handful of tiny pewter guns is presumably serves some sort of purpose in the game at Fort Memoriam, but which they could all uh, could, but could also be used to outfit a small army of elves. Oh. Okay. I thought we were actually going to get something decent out of that, but never mind. <laughs> we're fully ready. What a waste of my life. I presume those will come in handy for something at some point. I'd frankly dread to think what. Ooh. Your L of uh, Breto Gizmo bleeps, and as far as you know, the only way to get it to stop making that noise is to find whatever it's so very excited about. It turns out to be a crate, which is potentially exciting for the both of you, if you can unlock it. And I have a keystone, so I'm going to do that. You slot the keystone into the appropriate hole. Good, my mother would be very displeased with me, as would the Catholic Church for that matter, if I put it in the inappropriate hole, and the lid slides open, conveniently covering the keyhole so you can't take the stone back. You do get some other stuff in exchange though. Three more scraps, and this. El Vibrato Punch Card Complicated. This piece of thick paper with dozens of square holes punched in it, it looks like the ones they used for the census back in 90, but way more complicated. Okay, maybe the professor will be interested in that. Okay, can I please have some directions to the place of Breadwood? You're still asleep. Hello, friend. This guy stopped messing around with his watch and started eating some jelly beans. What you eating? Jelly beans? Yep. Can I have one? No. Please. No, get your own. Well, I never. No tarnation. Um, where did you buy them? A little ways south of here, a fellow by the name of Roy Bean. Roy Bean's House of Justice and Jelly Beans. That's a heck of a place. This lady is still whistling excellently. Well, I'm not seeing any blockage. What's well, up with you lazy people? Um, you stuck again? Yes, we've got ourselves a hell of a canyon to get across and no materials for bridge building. Any ideas? There's an old mine in town up north by the name of Breadwood. They opened a lumber camp for mines after they dried up. You can fix a deal with them for the lumber we need. I can handle the engineering side of things. Okie dokie, where is it? It is there. Good, good, good. Of course, anything you can find to build a bridge out of is fine, but that seems the simplest option. What else? I'm not going to build it out of jelly beans, am I? Please say I'm not going to. Right, to Breadwood we go. There's a goblin standing off to one side of the trail, just staring up at the sky. Doesn't even seem to notice you're approaching. 
Um, hello? Oh, hello, hi. What are you doing? You're watching the eclipse? A moon, I am looking at it. Neither moon is out right now. N neither moon? Do we live in a world with two moons? <laughs> Nothing being up there. I am happy to waiting. Talk to, to, talk to it? The moons won't to coming for hours. You two waiting this long? Yes, yes, moon so big, so bright, so big to waiting and seeing. You very to liking moons, huh? Yes, yes, very to liking. I am collecting rocks of them. The goblin takes a bunch of pills out of his pocket to show you. They could be moon rocks for all you know. Sell him some more moon rocks. Once the goblin is distracted looking up at the sky, you pick up a few random pebbles from the ground. Oh, hello, I am just to remembering. I moon rock am having too. Are you like to buying them? Oh, giddy -yard. I would literally pay through the nose for a better goblin dictionary to make this easier to read. Oh yes, these moon rocks are different look having. Yes, rare limited edition. <laughs> oh goodness. Nice, I am to buying. Nice indeed. Oh gosh. This place has gone to hell on a horse cart, it seems. What's up with you? Uh, howdy Susie, there was a ranch out of way by the name of Lady Alexandria. There's not much hope of her still being alive. Keeping your chin up. I'm fine, as long as we put a stop to this. Oh, cool. Yes, we will do that, I promise. As soon as I can figure out where the hell the shop is, please tell me there is a shop here. There's no shop here. Someone lied to me! Somebody lied to me and said there was a shop here and there isn't. Well, fiddlesticks. Hello, mate. You have a magnificent moustache. I'm Sticky McThin. I'm half. I'm here on behalf of the Manifest Disney Railroad Company. We've been needing to build a bridge, and I'm here to cut a deal for your lumber and also a book, because frankly that's all I care about at this point in my life. Alright, I believe we can scrape together that much wood. What kind of a sort of a down payment are you offering? Oh. Um, I was kind of expecting you to build a company. Uh, and you want that much lumber for no pay up payment up front? Are you serious? I can probably offer you some free train rides. Well, I do enjoy a nice train ride, but that deal would be a real problem, and I've already got seven problems to worry about. The mayor glances at a list of problems posted on the wall and paces around nervously. Offer to help? Maybe I could help you with some of your problems. Oh, thank you. I would certainly welcome any assistance you could offer. Look at the problems board. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What a lot of stuff. You can at the glance at the problems on the problem board, which offer a selection of current issues along as a dire warning. What's the dire warning? Which one would you like to help with? Um, I don't know. The overdue book? That seems a very small one. Our library's only got four books, so it's a serious business when someone doesn't return to them. Our records say it was loaned out to a lady named of Alexandria as a couple of mares ago. I don't know her, but we've still got an address. Okay, I'll go ask her. What's the dire warning? Um, no. Look at the note at the bottom. Yes. The la last time a mayor let this list get over three items, we chased him out of town with his breadstick nailed to the top of his head. Goodness. Um. Yes. There's no shop. Unless this is the shop. Is th no, this isn't a shop. This is something vaguely resembling a bar. Unless. Oh, don't tell me this is the shop. It's a trading post. It's a post. I'll trade with it. I don't care. I'm going to buy a postcard because then I can send a note to my brother. I'm going to buy this book because we're about a million years too late for it. I'm going to buy this because we're also desperately in need of it. Some wet boots. <laughs> These boots are uncomfortable to wear but you could probably walk across hot coals if you had them and not even feel it. <laughs> that sounds really useful. I'm just going to buy those just in case. Mushroom picking pliers. What the hell are these? A pair of delicate pliers designed for picking mushrooms without knocking loose all the important spores and stuff. That's probably to do with like the foraging skill, isn't it? Right, well now that I've practically bankrupted myself, I honestly do not care. Because we finally got the book. Let's read this one first though, for the fun of it. Um Expert Poisoner. A passive skill that multiplies the amount of poison you apply to enemies when you poison them. Consume more potions or reduce the target's moxie. Uh, probably going to go for the big spleen. Yeah. No particular preference for any of them. You take a big whiff of the cologne sample and feel your spleen enlarge. Then you sneeze so hard that mo the magazine is blown completely to bits. 
Oh dear, right, we shall come back to all of this later because I want to tie up loose ends before we open up any more ends. So, lock-in expertise skill. Good, good, good. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. <laughs> Run, orphans! Run! Do I need to upgrade that? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. And guess what? I, I can't afford to upgrade it the whole way, but I'm going to upgrade it as much as I can in the vain hope that it will allow me to upgrade the vast majority, uh, unlock the vast majority of stuff. So, we've got the lockpicking skill. It took half the episode, but we've got it. It doesn't matter. I'm now going to return to the house in the desert. No, I'm not. I'm going to shoot this. Crack shot that I am. I am going to sort the house in the desert, because I think I've got the WD-40 or whatever the hell it was I wanted for this place. We can sort this problem out, and then I'm going to comb through the map again, basically explore everything, check for any locked things, open them all, and then show like a highlight reel of anything interesting that we find. What? What happened to me having... I had some sort of oiling can, didn't I? Don't tell me I used it for something else, like some kind of muppet. I did, didn't I? I've used it for something else. <sighs> right, never mind, it doesn't matter. We'll find some more somewhere else. In the meantime, I'm just going to go wandering around and finding the stuff. The silversmith's house, we'll deal with that people later. Give me a minute to calm down and also to sort everything else out. What? Between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing the concepts of this outhouse are more dangerous than the average outhouse. Oh! A pyrobove. A I have to confess, I genuinely thought I was going to be fighting a poo monster, but um, the fact that I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful about that. The toilet's pistol. <laughs> By the soft light of fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose with one hand as you fish out your prize with the other. Oh, wow. That's better? I don't know, I'm still using the basic pistol, which is the problem. No, it's slightly worse, but it does also apply a bit of poison damage, but I honestly don't want to just fire piddle bullets at people. Ah, oh, lockpicking also consumes needles. Well, this is going to take time, isn't it? A stock certificate. What the hell is this? A certificate entitling the bearer to 11 shares of the United Groceries Industry, a company based in Topeka. Just sell it. It's a very specific meat value. Um, okay, that wasn't very interesting. Um, oh yes, it's with that haunted doll one. I never discovered where she went in the end. Never mind. Was there anything um, down here? Oh, for crying out loud. I finally solved the log picking problem and then it turns out there's another problem. Another skill, even. I'm assuming that safe cracking and lock picking are two different things because saves are like combinations and locks are, well, locks. Surprise, surprise. Never mind. This doesn't work. I'm going to. I'm. What the hell? You see a small hell cow, more of a hell calf, really. Um, it snorts at a patch of brush, lighting it on fire, and then starts grazing. Arr, kill it! Calm down. It's only a little one. Kill it before it gets any bigger. I want a kind of horn swaddle, Eliza. Although I don't think Susie's going to like that. Um, that isn't actually a thing. What would that even mean? You decide to try and scare it away instead. Look out, it's the thing that cows are afraid of. I'm not sure what that would be, but there's definitely one of them coming along. The hell calf grunts with surprise and gallops away, apparently not wanting to risk an encounter with whatever it was you were thinking of. Oh, 
I was thinking hornswoggle it off its horns. <laughs> that makes zero sense, but uh, nothing in this game makes any sense. So I was just waiting for the game to explain it. Well, come on, I've got some oil, please, please, finally. Good. Use the last of the oil on the cow, and the rusty hinges, and the gate swings open silently. Ace. You keep up to the door, and you hear the gang inside. You notice that the door is jam. The door jam is busted, probably from being kicked in. There's a crude his hesp hesp made of bent nails on the door. Look like the bandits have been locking it with a padlock from the outside, and they leave. Let's lock them inside. You definitely got the upper hand at this point. What's your next move? Take them to dirt. Okay, fellas, the jig is up. A muffled voice says, It's the law. And then, tarnation. We're locked in. You hear a chorus of defeated sighs. Throw out your weapons. Ha 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 ha. You hear a quiet but heated discussion inside. Eventually, a voice says, Alright, and some pistols fall out of the window. Just kidding, I'm still going to arrest you. <laughs> oh, dang it. You round up the gang and pull them back to Dirtwater. That's the house in the desert gang. All except for the house, that is, did it get away? Was? W w w was I supposed to? Nah, I'm just messing with you. Here is your reward. Yay! You've really cleaned up the area. Does this mean I get to be sheriff now? No, but you could be a marshal if you'd like. Oh, what a coincidence. That's my real middle name. Is it? I mean, good for me. I mean, it doesn't really fit in with the rest of my name, but never mind. Um, thanks for your help, marshal. Yay! I did the thing, <clears throat> and now there's at least 15 people that are very, very cheesed off at my existence, but I honestly don't care. We're also back in dirt water, which means I can send myself, send, I was going to send myself a postcard then. That was depressing. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send my brother a postcard. I'd like to send a postcard. Good, good, good. Right, back on the quest for locks. <laughs> he was looking up to the sky to save him. But even the sky can't save you from like 40 angry bears. Oh, goodness. Ah, okay, this is the General's office in Fort Cowardice. More specifically, it's the door to the General's office. Even more specifically, it is the locked door to the General's office. But no more. We didn't realize there was somebody in here. Hi friend, the goblin is seated at the desk repeatedly firing their pistol at the pie safe. Get their attention or get their attention with a bit of violence. Hi friend, what are you doing? Shooting pies, always shooting pies. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Why shooting a pie? Yes, to destroying obviously. Much to destroying a terrible pie. What is wrong with a pie? Ugh, a human with never understanding. No seriously, why? Shut up, so much angry. Keep trying. Look, I, I think I think the pie is already much pretty pretty much destroyed. Destroy, eh? Huh? Look, so many holes in pie safe. You're winning. A pie is dead. You certain being waiting here. I checking. Kitty on my tooth. Kitty yards. Piece of dog. You probably shouldn't try. To <laughs> I'm trying. If you'd stop shooting at it for five minutes. How can I do this without you shooting me? Can you just stop doing what? Hooray, Warwick says, uh, you, you have succeeded. Pie is being destroyed. Yes, 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 yes. What are I shooting now? I don't know. Go and shoot some cows. Um, you finding another pie? Wait, there are more pies being? Yes, a world is full of pies. Oh no, this violence will never ending. Sorry, being, not wishing to enabling this behavior. No, this is my cross bearing. I must go in and continuing the fight. Okay, thanking you. Reminds me very much of the dialogue of the um, Peter Butterworth's character in. I don't think that was Peter Butterworth, but never mind. I think it was the other bloke because his name I can never remember. In Carry On Abroad, that is a reference that you will only get if you've got very, very specific and very outdated film interests. But never mind. Um, I'm wishing you good luck against these forces of pies. Leaving the gun, fighting a pie with honor, with fists. Yes, you are correct. Truly, a pie must be. With own strength fighting. General Gob's a pistol. Which looks a little bit better than mine. This pistol is not of goblin manufacture. You can tell because it doesn't look like complete garbage. In fact, the opposite. It is. It looks like not garbage. Yes. He strides out of the door, jaw clenched, resolute with pie hatred. 
Well, that was weird, but I guess I'm the general now. Yes. St Sticky Marshal General McThin. Is this better? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, I'm already doing stupid volumes of damage, but I've got a slightly bigger gun now, so I'm happy about that. Um, a lead pie. <laughs> <laughs> this pie has been shot so many times it is now full of 100% bullets. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was a heck of an experience. I mean, that was worth the book in and of itself. Oh, dear. Is there anything else here? Military grade whiskey, small smell, and salt. That's not very exciting. Or safe cracking that I don't have. There's an open grave here. It doesn't seem to have a skeleton inside. I wonder what they're asking for rents. <laughs> Kitty on. Jump in and see what you find. Some skull chips, some grave dirt, and an old wedding ring. Ah, cool. This honeymoon is definitely old for this tarnished silver thing. Oh, that's a bit sad. Never mind. Oh, yeah, there was something here, wasn't it? What? I thought this was the one that said nothing interesting inside. You heard a quiet rustling, as though a single goblin were rummaging around in a crate full of straw. Go in and beat the straw out of it. My friend, I am so going to murder you. So very much with 150 points of damage, which is three times more than I need to kill you with. But never mind. <laughs> you dig through the crate the goblin was rummaging through, but there was nothing of any interest in there. Oh, I murdered somebody for no good reason. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um... You make short work of the lock and head inside. You enter the delicatessen and help yourself to some sandwiches. Oh. Hooray. Great. More stuff I didn't need. Oh, dear. Make short work of the lock and head inside the cafe. It results in a few cups of chicory before leaving various dirty cups and sinks. You start to wonder why a cafe wouldn't be open at this time of day. You see a scheduled poster on the wall, and sure enough, it says somebody named Jean was supposed to be working this shift. Oh. The final guard was called Jean, so I probably could have said to him, Hey, get to work, you lazy bones. Yeah. Never mind. Well, that wasn't very important. Um, that there was a box of treasure at the end of here, which is probably just going to be more meat. But, um... No, it's not. It's full of jewellery. A goblin engagement ring. Increases your spell damage, but reduces your pistols. So that'd be good for a spellcaster. And then there's this. It's sturdy, but man, is it ugly. And probably the person it was, the person it was meant to wear it as well. Increases your armour, but reduces your moxie. That's the thing about all the goblin gear. It's always a trade-off, isn't it? Such a pain in the butt, now. Never mind. Um, some distance off the trail, you see a water tower that appears to have sprung a leak. I better plug that thing. You fired a single bullet into the hole, plugging it and rendering the water tower completely safe, if slightly leaded. Oh, great, I didn't realise we were looking next to flint. Oh, uh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, let's see if the professor can tell me anything about that punch card. No. No, he can't, and I don't have enough scraps for this. Goodness, this isn't going well. Never mind. Now I've got enough scraps for a card, but now I'm going to have to go back to the professor's house, aren't I? Probably not going to find anything here, though, so I'm going to check it out. I'm sorry, what was that? What? Green thumb? What's this? Um, you gain XP from foraging. Oh. Hooray. That is a thing of which I can be pleased. It's, oh no, 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 I don't want to go there, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go there. What? You encounter a bandit who doesn't look very bandit-like at all, but with wearing a lab coat and a slide rule holster. Fortunately, she's also wearing a standard black bandit hat, otherwise you may not have been able to tell. Alright, Buster, this is a stick-up, and over to meat. You don't seem to have a gun. Um, how about I just punch you out and leave instead? I'd like to see you try, because I've invented an anti-punching ring, and it would help me test it. Fight her, hand over meat, or con her out of meat. I'm so gonna con her out of some meat. An anti-punching me, you say? That's pretty good. You know what you need to go with that? An anti-kicking rock. You just picked up that rock off the ground. You surprised me, and I dropped it. <laughs> Look. See these little flecks of quartz? They're the crystal relay that holds the anti-kick magic. I bought it from a goblin sage for 25 meat. Since you're a member of the scientific community, I'll happily sell it to you for a mere 30. Okay, you've got a deal. Bye-bye. 
<laughs> bye bye, silly person. Okay, let's go back to the professor's house and quickly make another keystone so that we can open another box, should we need it. For crying out loud, I am scamming the living life out of people. The FBI are going to be after me in a minute. I don't know why, because the FBI aren't involved in scams, but you know what I mean. Investigating the smoke of a nearby campfire, you find a bandit that is snoozing cosily beneath a large and colourful quilt, which seems like a strange choice for camping gear, right? Especially in the middle of the desert. Then he wakes up and jumps to his feet, revealing that the large and colourful quilt is actually a large and colourful quilted pair of pants! In stark contrast to his whimsical pants, he is undeniably hostile. If I fight him, I might get his pants off him, though. Which is not a phrase I ever was going to say in my life, but I kind of want the gun as well. I'm going to go for that. Quick, a lizard, or, or a spider, or, or, or something, that just went up your trouser leg. Oh no, and my trousers are so big and soft and quilted, I didn't even notice. Exactly, do something fast. <laughs> the bandit quickly unbuckles his uh, belt gun, and in his haste to take off his trousers, his drawstring gets knotted up, and he ends up rolling around on the ground frantically. You pick up his gun, and roll away. Oh, wow. Actually, I should look at my guns, because I must have loads by now. So there's the bandit pistol. What about the bandit six gun? How's that compare? That boosts my moxie by one, and I need to get my moxie up to six. So I'm really going to go for the Desert Gang six gun for the time being. All these bandit pistols are much the same. Yeah, okay. So I have the naughty person gun, but um, I need to get my moxie up a little bit more so that I can... Uh, so that I can do the thing in the circus, which is another loose end we haven't sorted out yet. After the side of the trail, you spot a tree branch that's the perfect height for some giddy-ups which is what pull-ups are called around here. Okay, cool, bit of XP, not complaining. Confused, I'm not complaining. You know, I'm complaining a bit confused, of course I am, but you know, other than that, everything's fine. The barn door has been opened. This is all a bit suspicious. Um, can I get a needle, please? Yes, please. It's in the toy box. Not toy box. I found some toy skeletons. Aww. It's a group of toy skeletons made from somewhat self-referentially polished bone. Oh, that's cute. Can I combine them with the guns, maybe? <laughs> that would be cute. That's not a skeleton army. Jars of milk. Mostly evaporated. But salvage what you can. Three more bottles of tainted milk, which I really want to drink, but for some reason I can't. Some more boards and some churns, presumably for the production of milk. Okay. That's kind of cool. You have four bottles... Four bottles of cow's milk makes some butter. Oh, so you can't drink milk? This is some tainted cow's milk that has been rendered into somewhat safer, but churning a whole lot of evil out of it and turning it into butter. Increases your speed and maximum AP for the rest of the day. When you say apply it, do you mean I'm rubbing it on myself? Because <laughs> that's kind of... kind of terrifying. What, what of these is it going to use, or is it not going to use any of them? Um, you rub the stick of butter all over your body, greasing yourself up for whatever the hell is to come. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wow, what a thing. Okay, let's keep exploring. No, let's not. Let's pickpocket a skeleton. Here's an unusual sight. A long boat out in the middle of the desert. If this were a beach, you should call it beached. But you can't call it deserted because there's still somebody in it. And that somebody is a skeleton wearing a helmet with horns on it. She looks pretty bored. And she, I must be very close if I can tell the difference between the gender just from the skeleton. They look pretty bored and uh, idly polishing the dragon-headed prow of her ship. You think she has been here for a long time indeed. What is it, the wife of Leif Erikson? Um, pickpocket them, I suppose. Well, that's unlikely, huh? I mean, if she isn't actually wearing any clothes, except maybe some rags, they aren't exactly going to have pockets. Anyway, why would a skeleton have anything in her pockets worth stealing? What are you doing? You're going for it anyway? Okay, I have no idea how, but you managed to steal a, steal a skeleton's golden tooth without her noticing. I can't deny that I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, that's a hell of a thing. Right, let's keep going. Kindly shut up. Right, I think I needed to go through here. Yes, indeed, in the office. Oh, goody, and another safe. Several years worth of hat magazines, hat trend, hat and head, hats today, that kind of thing. Very exciting. Um, anything here? The guy who sat here wore a lot of hats, but he made even more. What a thing. And again with this, oh, it's slightly larger than a cowboy hat. There's going to be a really cool hat in there, and I want to have it, but I can't have it because... Fiddlesticks. Oh, 
A shot rings out and something buzzes past your ear. You quickly dive behind a rock just in case the two things aren't connected and not just somebody hunting a nearby and there's also a bee. Peering carefully around the rock, you eventually spot movement in the underbrush. It is a hunter with an old-fashioned matchlock rifle and a cloak with leaves stuck to it, which is less effective as, as camouflage than it sounds because all the trees around here are pine trees. You also notice that she's been out here for a very long time, which you can infer from the fact that she is a skeleton. I'm going to distract her and run away. You, you pick up the small rock and aim your throw very carefully and pitch it to a nearby boulder, hitting the target and ricochets perfectly, knocking a squirrel off a tree branch above the hunter's head. The rustling raucous would doubtlessly be really entertaining and comical to watch, but you decide to take advantage of your carefully engineered distraction and ride away. Good, I thought you were going to say I was going to pick up the rock and ride my horse away behind it, which would have been a heck of a thing. Right. This table has a little model of the region on it. Deploy forces to a skeletons. You can probably get this army to attack a place by putting little toy skeletons on the diorama. Deploy to the gulch. Oh, so could I help myself fight off the goblins there by deploying the skeletons there? That's cool. I think I'll keep that, because I've already dealt with the gulch, but I'll keep that and keep that in mind just in case there's something else that might come in handy for. Now I've run out of frickin' needles. Oh, it's just one thing after a freaking another with this place, isn't it? Ugh. Great. Well, that's a pickle and a half I've gotten myself into. I've used up all my needles, and all of the shops that I know about aren't selling any at the moment. Well, that is a pickle. That is a pickle and a half. My Moxie by 11. I really want to drink that. Yes, I don't think drinking this is a good idea. You're no cow scientist, but you're pretty sure this would kill you if you drank it. Come to think of it, you're pretty sure there's not even such a thing as a cow scientist. This is bizarre. There's this really good stuff, but you, I can't, I'm not allowed to drink any of it, which is really, really irritating. Yeah. Like the milk, for example, comes under po Yeah, both of these come under potions, and I have capacity to drink them, but I can't. Do I need like a perk, like a like a cow t t t t a cow tummy perk or something that lets me eat these things? I don't know. Right, we've done most of the map, so I think we can actually do a bit of you know proper exploring. Um, so let's go to the silversmith's house. The sign says, Silver Bullets Making Apparatus, help yourself. And well, I think I'll do that. The workbench has a little burner and crucible for melting silver things, and also some bullet marks, which seems pretty straightforward. There's also a vice, you could smash silver bullets into needles if you wanted to. Oh, cool. I don't think I'm going to need the cufflinks for anything. Um, yeah. Make needles from a silver bullet. How many do I get? Two per bullet. That's pretty good. I'm going to do the wedding ring as well. And make two more needles. He says pressing the wrong button. There we are. So that gives me three needles. So we can do a little bit more, um... A little bit more stuff after that. What? You found this ring embedded in a plant. You like plants. Makes foraging random encounters much more likely. Oh, cool. That's exciting. Um, oh, giddy aunt. Well, there go my needles. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, gosh. This bookshelf contains 90 copies of Johnny Terramane. There's also something weird about it, though. It's too neatly organised, like somebody was hiding something. Search for some secrets. Um, tucked behind one of the books, you find a small envelope full with some receipts, about half of them for a shape a shop called the Silver Plater. He was crooked! The silversmith was just selling cheap fakes. Oh well, he's gone now, and so are most of his customers, so there's not much sense in stirring up trouble. You write on the location of the shop, it might come in handy. Yes, indeed. The shop has been pretty picked over, but you find a couple of things that are worth keeping. And another freaking thing. I forgot the darn combination to this confounded thing. If you can open it, you're welcome to what's in it. I couldn't agree more. 
We're just gonna bust in and loot the joint. It's okay. Look at the dust over everything. The guy checked out ages ago. Yup. Oh dear. Trust me, I'm gonna pay for him. <clears throat> a spittoon. Or at least it looks like a spittoon. But it's next to the bed. It might actually be a bedpan. Investigate it. Really? I mean, if it is a spittoon, that's bad enough. But it might be a bedpan, and that would be way worse. No, investigate it. I feel like you maybe aren't getting what I'm saying. We're talking about an object that somebody probably uses when they wake up in the middle of the night and can't be bothered to walk to the outhouse, and the best you can hope for is that they maybe only use it to spit nighttime tobacco juice into it, in which case it's only full of rancid congealing tobacco spit. I'm investigating it. Are you even listening to me, or are you just sort of skimming past the text and hitting buttons randomly? It's a bedpan, I'm pretty sure there's treasure in there, there always has been, and you aren't stopping me now. Shut up! Okay, fine, have it your way, have it your own filthy, disgusting way. It turns out probably not to be a bedpan, but it is definitely a spittoon, which is definitely filled with rushing brown spit. Fish around and say, what is wrong with you? A hell of a lot, evidently. Okay, you plunge your hand in up to the wrist. It makes a glop noise and breaks the thin skin of congealing toxins that were previously keeping the dire smell in relative check. Now you're choking the miasma of oily, bitter chalk chew stink. Do you know that feeling when you're about to puke and now you get the taste way back in the rear of your mouth? That metallic tang uh, by the root of your tongue that feels like you're sit sucking on a corroded old penny? <laughs> Just tell me what I've got. You found a filthy, slime-covered old brooch. Are you happy? I bet you're going to put it on without even washing it first. So maybe I will. Oh dear. Is it any good? It's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Um... Do any of my potions increase my moxie? That reduces my moxie. Melee damage, maximum AP, mysticality, spooky resistance. <laughs> the sarsaparilla, yes. Um, increases the moxie, drink it. You drink the substance. You gain the effect, Sasper whatever. Nobody cares, because all we care about is that my Moxie is finally high enough to win this game, which we can do as our last thing today, which means we'll have tied up almost all the loose ends that we missed. Yay. Right. I would like to play the game, please. I would like to shoot like a jaguar. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how a Jaguar shoots, but presumably it's pretty good. You clearly, you, well, you, cl you clear nearly the entire wall of balloons, and the clown looks genuinely impressed. Well, I'll be. It looks like you win. Congratulations on the finest shooting I've seen in quite some time. The show will be starting soon. Don't miss it. Admit one to Barnaby Bob's astonishing demonstration of precipitously and skill, whatever the hell that means. Okay, can I go to the the thing here? I have a ticket. Okay, apparently no, I don't have a ticket. Apparently... I... Well, never mind then. <laughs> sake. Never mind. Um, let's just go back to Fort All Dead. Open with crowbar. Anything interesting? A ring? Rare, uh, uh, it's a rare mineral magnetically attracted to meat. It's real treasure to a prospector and a real nuisance to a butcher. Oh, cool. What ring have I got on at the moment? The nasty ring. Arrgh. I kind of want that. Because I am greedy and like money. And it's not hardly as if I need any more moxie. Yeah, let me, excuse me gentlemen, excuse me. Let me, not go in here, let me open this. I'm not going to open those boxes because they've probably just got supplies in them. But I'm going to feel like there was something else here. Like a door that needed opening. 
with a lockpick? Have I just gone completely mad and I'm imagining things? Yes, evidently. Good, I'm going to work out my range on a range? I'm going to work out my rage on a bit of murder, I think. Well, fiddlesticks. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, I'm going to maximise my lockpicking because I'm so utterly sick of that. So I'm just going to max that out. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's enough of all that. <laughs> what a day. What a weird day this has been. Right, okay. So. We won the games at Fort Memoriam. We found Breadwood. We got the lockpicking book. We've combed through most of the right-hand side of the map. There's just a few places like the mine, but I don't think that had anything. Maybe, I don't think that had anything either. So there's basically just the caves, and the pickle factory, and the lazier dude ranch. Pretty much just like there was little few places are the only, I've, sorry, you can't see half of that. And I've, I sincerely apologize for that. Um, yeah, just a few places up here to check out still if we find a few more um, needles. Um, but yeah, other than that, and other than the safe cracking, which is really getting on my nerves, um, we are pretty much prepared to carry on exploring the rest of uh, this zone. But we've discovered a few extra places here, so next time I think we'll go to the silver platter, uh, silver plater even, not platter. Um, that would imply a restaurant. And yeah, we'll carry on exploring the rest of the middle section of the map, and we'll probably sort out some of the problems in dirt water. Anyway. That is enough of that. I don't know quite what the length this episode has been, because obviously I've cut bits of it out, what with exploring around and lock picking yourself, so I apologize if it's a slightly weird length, but never mind. Thank you very much for joining me this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Look after each other and good night.